So how do you do all those things I just mentioned? Well, one of the problems is that the power is down all over the starship. You can tell this because all of these cards are unpowered, as you can see down there in the corner. So for them to be effective, they have to be powered back up. You power up stations by winning tricks at the reserve power plant. If you win a trick at the reserve power plant, you can flip over one of these unpowered stations to the powered side. For instance, you could flip over the hangar and start getting people off the ship. You could flip over the infestation locus, which happens to be where the self-destruct sequence controls are, of course, so that you can start the self-destruct sequence. All of these places have special benefits that depend on whether or not the card is powered or not. So as you win tricks at the reserve power plant, you'll slowly start flipping these over so that their more powerful sides are in place. But be careful because if you lose tricks at the power plant, then the phage, being the semi-intelligent fungus that they are, manage to depower your stations. So be careful about that. Once these cards are flipped over to their powered side, then you have different win and lose conditions that you can take advantage of. For instance, you cannot escape humans to the, the rescued card when the hangar is powered down because the lifeboats are not able to be ejected. You have to power up the hangar and now they're ejectable. Similarly, you can't get the exosuits online very fast when you have the logistics bay turned off. As soon as you get power to the logistics bay, you can start pulling out the exosuits, which are more powerful uh, cards that you can play against the phage. You start with only 20 cards in your human deck, but there are more humans that have been captured by the phage, and there are some humans that are in cryosleep. So by powering on cryonics and the infestation locus, you can accelerate pulling out humans from the infestation locus and the cryonics to help you get more of your humans out and available for action. Some of the other stations when powered give you special abilities, like for instance the labs. If you can win a trick at the labs when it's powered on, you can flip over the flamethrower card which allows you to jury rig some flamethrowers that you can use against the phage later on. Or you could flip the ad hoc mechanism card which gives you a special tower action for the engineers that allow you to play two cards at once out of your hand instead of one which is really quite powerful and so on. You can get all four of these flipped over, which gives you more powerful tower actions during your turn. Let's talk a little bit more about Sentinels. Sentinels go through a bit of a life cycle. They start out facing to the left, and then something will happen, and they will turn to the right, and then something will happen again, and when that happens, they'll be discarded. So they can only apply their special effect while they're up here facing this way or this way, and then once they uh, get discarded again, that effect stops. So for most of the Sentinels, this happens when a trick resolves. So here we have five cards, the trick resolves, and this Sentinel would turn like this. And then another trick would happen it resolves, and then it would be discarded. Security Sentinels 
are a little bit different in that, you know, they get played the same way, but they're, they turn when a phage gets played into the, into the station because their special power is to block phage from coming in. So when the first one comes in, they would flip. Then when the second one comes in, then they would go away. Now the special effect though, is that if the card matches the suit, then it actually kills the security officer. So they're at a bit of a risk when they're acting as sentinels because they're acting as guards. But as long as it's something that's not a matching one, they live to see the next stage. And if they see something come in that's going to be super dangerous, they'll give their life to stop them from coming in. This is particularly useful for the powered up hangar, as you might imagine. Let's talk a little bit about exosuits. Exosuits are special cards that you can earn by winning tricks at the logistics bay when it's powered up. These exosuits are human cards and they get added to your deck and you can play them just like you do the other cards. But they're pretty powerful against the phages when they're trying to take tricks. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose this trick just happened. Normally, whoops. Normally we would lose this trick entirely because this is a diamond's trick. So this diamond card would kill one of my humans and this eruption would kill one of my humans too because eruptions kill um, human cards regardless of what suit they are. So we would lose two humans we'd have a diamond left and we'd lose that. But this is the oxygen scrubbers and people will start dying if we lose the oxygen scrubbers. So we don't want that to happen. Luckily, we have an exosuit. Now the exosuit has two powers. First, it can discard, it can be discarded to discard an eruption in the same station. So for instance, I could take this card discard it to the station so it would be available to come out later, and then I could discard this eruption card so that it's no longer in play for that trick. But that wouldn't do us any good because this would still kill this character and we'd be losing that trick. Luckily, the exosuit has another power too. You can kill it to discard any other phage card in the same station. So we could sacrifice this exosuit card to destroy, to discard that card. Now, this card will still kill her, but there are no more diamonds left, and this card is a draw, so the oxygen supply stays the same. And that is one of the reasons why exosuits are so powerful. They can turn victories, that you can gain victories from the jaws of defeat. As the game draws to a close, you're going to start running out of humans. The phage are going to kill them off, and hopefully you've gotten a lot of your humans off to the rescued pile. So it can happen that you have no cards in your hand because all of the remaining humans are either on stations or dead or escaped. So what happens then? Well, on your turn, if you have no cards in hand, then you are required to choose a station that has either phage cards, at least one phage card, or at least one human card and resolve that trick even if it has fewer than five cards on it. So you could resolve this trick if you wanted to, probably don't want to do that, or you could resolve this trick. 
Now, one of the nice things about tricks is if there are only human members there, then you have, then you will actually succeed at that trick, even if you don't have any of the matching symbols. So in this case, if these are the last three humans on the ship and there's no clubs left, you can still get them off the ship because I don't have any cards left. They're in the lifeboats and I can trigger that. Um, I can trigger the hanger to go and then they all three successfully do the hanger and escape. And that's about everything you need to know in order to play Outbreak on Hypatia. The rulebook has more detail on all of the tower actions that you have available to you, the sentinel actions that are available to you by the suits, how the exosuits work, how the trick taking works, and so on. So if you have any further questions, you can refer to the rulebook or ask online. Good luck! I hope you can save a lot of your crew members. Happy gaming!